Hello, early childhood teachers. My name is Joseph White. I'm a child psychologist and director for catechetical resources for OSV Publishing. I'm also uh, the co-author of the Alalu Early Childhood Religion Program and uh, host of the Alalu Show on YouTube, uh, which is a show for Catholic kids that uh, mostly follows the liturgical year. Um, so I, I thank you for joining me for this session on Seasons of Faith, sharing the liturgical year with young children. Um, and uh, let me just um, uh, say a few words to begin here about the liturgical year. You know, the liturgical year is how the church tells time. Um, the liturgical year unites the Western Catholic Church, and it provides a framework for us to connect with salvation history as we contemplate our own walk with God. So it, it immerses us in this history of our faith, um, beginning at Advent and continuing through Christmas and Ordinary Time and Lent and uh, Easter, and, uh, and then again in, in another period of, of Ordinary Time, we walk through the uh, salvation history and, uh, and then we place ourselves within that context. Um, and, and so as we think about that and we think about how our lives connect with the liturgical year, I think it's useful just to kind of walk through these seasons and think about uh, what they signify. Advent is this period of darkness, but there's a promise of light to come. Uh, Christmas is a time of joy and light and hope and promises fulfilled. Ordinary time um, is, uh, you know, in those everyday moments, those ordinary, it's not called ordinary time because it's average or, <laughs> or anything. It's called ordinary time because it's ordered. Um, but, uh, but I think it's also that time of year when, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of the regular time. And, and we do have that, don't we? We have those in our lives, those periods of darkness and those promises of, of hope, that time when that hope is fulfilled. And then we have those ordinary times, those, those things that are just kind of in between, everyday moments. Um, but this also provides us that time to find small joys and, and everyday things we can be thankful for. In, in the church calendar, ordinary time is often those times when we give thanks for our saints and we remember um, significant people in, in, in our history. Uh, in, in Lent, we come to a crossroads. Uh, Lent is a time of self-examination, of, of um, penance. You know, we kind of take stock of our lives and think about, um, in some ways, sometimes the ways that we've fallen short and, and what we want to keep working on. And so it's a time of reform. Um, and, and that prepares us to celebrate the great mystery of Easter as we, you know, celebrate that um, death and resurrection of, of Jesus Christ. And, um, you know, we, we think about here about uh, new beginnings as we celebrate new life. And even think about how that parallels our lives, that we have um, deaths, we have things that end, uh, sometimes tragically end in our lives, and then we have these signs of new life and new beginnings as well. And then at Pentecost in our church year, uh, this is the time that uh, we remember the fire of the Holy Spirit as we open ourselves up to the movement of God in our own lives. So I, I wanna offer you a couple of questions for reflection as we get ready to talk about activities for the liturgical year, because I, I like to, you know, if you've heard me speak before, when I'm talking with early childhood teachers, I know that you are coming because you want practical ideas. You don't want just, you know, a bunch of theological platitudes. You want, what can I take and do in my classroom? Um, but before we get there, I, I'd like you to pause just for a moment and think about these two things. Number one, what is your favorite season of the liturgical cycle? Uh, of all of these different seasons of the church year, which are you most drawn to and, and, and what do you like about it? Um, why is it particularly meaningful for you? I wanna point out that um, what we're doing today, what we're talking about today is situated within these five primary tasks of catechesis, our five main jobs in teaching religion to kids and forming them in their faith, um, which are outlined in the directory for catechesis. If it surprises you for, for, to hear me say five, 
um, and you were expecting six, uh, it could be because you, you didn't realize yet that the new directory for catechesis that came out last year in 2020 reformulated this list so that the last two cateches, uh, tasks of catechesis are folded into one. Um, but the second task of catechesis is what we're focused on today, initiating into the celebrating of the mystery. That's what we're doing when we're um, forming kids around the liturgical year and the celebrations and seasons of our church. We are initiating them into the celebration of the mystery. So some important points to remember as we do that. Number one, use ritual. Um, ritual, as you know, as an early childhood educator, is so important. Uh, it provides a sense of security. Ritual, um, sociologists say, provides us opportunities to bond with others, to come together. Um, it also, ritual provides some behavioral expectations. So you probably have lots of different rituals in your classroom, the ways that you do things. When a substitute comes and they don't know them, uh, that can, you know, make for a disastrous day sometimes. Um, uh, ritual provides some ease of transition from, from one activity to another. And, uh, and ritual is very important as we talk about the church here. We have traditions and rituals uh, that are such an important part of our liturgical year. Um, create a sacred space in your classroom. If you don't have one, I think this is a, a wonderful thing to do. Um, all it takes is just a little end table or a decorator table, and it can be a table that uh, changes throughout the year based on the liturgical season. So you see on the left a table that's set for Lent with a purple cloth. You see on the right a table that's set for Easter with gold and, and white um, and uh, some different things there, sacred objects, battery operated candle, um, you know, rosary, statuary, other kinds of things like that. Serves as a focal point for prayer. It's a nice place to have a circle time to, um, to pray or to sing to God or to experience a Bible story. Um, it, it's, it's a nice focal point and a nice reminder that God is with us in our classroom, even at times that we're not having religion class. Use active learning approaches. You know, the, the liturgical year is rich in multi-sensory experience. And young children are concrete learners. Um, and, uh, you know, especially uh, child-directed uh, and child-initiated activities are, are helpful in engaging young kids. Um, I have a whole other talk that I do on that. But, you know, research says that kids are most engaged when they can guide themselves in a multi-sensory way through their learning. And uh, so those child-initiated, child-directed activities are so important. Um, and our faith has a rich history of multi-sensory catechesis and worship. And we want to mirror that as we teach about the faith to our young learners. Um, so now let's go through the church here and talk about some practical things that you can do to uh, celebrate different liturgical seasons. Um, so at Advent, one of my favorite activities to do with young kids at Advent is to do a dramatic play of the Annunciation. Um, and here you have a little girl dressed up as an angel and another girl dressed as, as Mary. And, uh, and even though the Feast of the Annunciation is actually in March, um, that's nine months before Christmas, uh, kids this age <laughs> don't, don't quite get that yet. Um, and, uh, and it's a good time to remember the angel's visit to Mary and the fact that, that we are uh, getting ready for Jesus. And that leads me to the next thing that I want to show you, this getting ready uh, for, for Jesus activity and then uh, um, some angels and uh, uh, pipe cleaner and, and advent wreath and, and, and some things that pipe cleaner, advent wreath and some other things that we can do. So uh, the getting ready for Jesus activity really just consists of um, setting up a nativity scene and talking about each part of that nativity scene, but not putting in yet the baby Jesus and talk about how we're getting ready for Jesus. And it might be also a time, you know, because as you're moving into that season of Advent that you're changing the uh, the colors on the um, uh, classroom altar and talking about why, and talking about how the colors are changing in the church and how we're all getting ready for Jesus. Talk about how we might want to get ready for Jesus, how we might want to think about, you know, how we're doing with the way that we're treating others and showing love to one another and making sure that we 
really work on uh, increasing the love in our hearts um, as uh, as we get ready for for Jesus and welcoming him at Christmas. Um, here is a, an activity where, where kids can make some simple angels, uh, invite them to glue a, a pre-cut circle for the head and a pre-cut triangle for the body um, on a piece of dark colored construction paper, and then uh, paint the child's, the child's hands with white paint and have them press on uh, their hands on the construction paper on either side to make the wings of the angel. And then after the wings dry, the child can add details to the angel with markers or glitter pens if you're slightly more daring, uh, facial features and a, and a halo and things like that. Uh, another thing we can make is a pipe cleaner advent wreath. Invite the kids to, uh, to make that um, begin by tying two large green pipe cleaners together to form a circle and then have the kids wrap uh, purple and pink pipe cleaners around a pencil to make their candles. Uh, they're going to be coiled candles and then have them wrap uh, a side of the purple and pink pipe cleaners uh, around the green pipe cleaner so that they, um, you know, are, are standing there on the wreath. And then uh, using some pre-cut gold pipe cleaners, have the kids bend each tip to make a flame and then insert the flat sides of those flames into each candle. Um, and you can explain to the kids that each candle represents a week of Advent. And, and the pink candle, of course, is for the third week in Advent, Gaudete Sunday, where we rejoice in anticipation of the Lord. That brings us to Christmas. Um, again, we can have some dramatic play in the classroom at Christmas time. Uh, this is a little boy and a girl acting out the story of the Holy Family. And you see St. Joseph the carpenter there working in his carpentry shop, you know, and you know, with some blocks from the block center. And you see uh, Mary there with baby Jesus, uh, who we now at Christmas celebrate has been born. Um, I also want to show you a couple of particular activities, but before I leave this slide, I want to uh, make mention of the importance of Christmas music and how important music is in all of our liturgical seasons, but particularly at Christmas. And, um, you know, the importance of singing some of those Christmas carols uh, with our children. Um, this activity is called God's Special Gift. And uh, what you'll need here for this activity is a tiny box with a lid, one for each child. Uh, a popsicle stick cut in half, one of those for each child, some hay or shredded paper, uh, a gift bow that's going to go on the top of the little box. Um, uh, by the way, you can get those boxes, of course, at you know, like at uh, craft stores, Michael's Hobby Lobby, places like that, um, uh, or you know, usually in a lot of different places at, at Christmas time as well, little gift boxes. Um, you'll need scissors and glue and markers. And uh, what you're going to do is, is uh, help them to, with their popsicle stick, to make a little baby Jesus um, and lay him there in the hay. And uh, then, on, you know, put the lid on top with the bow. And uh, you're going to act this out for them and show them how they might use this to talk to others about God's greatest gift. So you could say, I want to talk to you about God's greatest gift, the best gift you ever gave. And you could do this as you introduce the activity, showing the example that you've made, the model um, for them. Um, and, and you could say, inside this box, I have a special reminder of the best gift God ever gave us. Can anybody guess what that might be? And, you know, the kids might have all kinds of different ideas. Um, hopefully somebody will think of baby Jesus, but if not, you can say, come and lift the lid off and, and let's see, what is God's greatest gift? Oh, it's a baby, it's baby Jesus. And, uh, and so we can talk about that and then have them do the same thing with their family members at home to say, inside here, I have a reminder of God's greatest gift. Can you guess what it is? Uh, a game that we can play at Christmas time is the Christmas star game. And you're going to use this game to remind the kids of the star that led the shepherds and the kings to the baby Jesus. Um, so you're going to hide the star somewhere in the room while the children cover their eyes, no peeking. And then you'll say to the children, shepherds, shepherds, where's the star? You need to find your way afar. And then allow the kids to look for the star and give them clues, you know, tell them when they're close or far or hot or cold. And when a child finds the star, give that child the opportunity to hide the star while the other kids cover their eyes. You can do this over and over again because everybody likes to have a turn to hide the star. 
Um, and, you know, the second time through, instead of the shepherds, you can say, wise men, wise men, where's the star? You need to find your way afar. So you can alternate it that way and talk about how uh, both the, the shepherds and the, the three kings of the wise men use the star to find the baby Jesus. Um, I want to talk now about ordinary time and multisensory activities that we can use around ordinary time. Um, we want to let the saints be our companions on the journey as we go through ordinary time. Children really need heroes today. It's sad to me as a child psychologist that kids' heroes tend to be either influencers that are paid to do product promotions on YouTube or people playing video games that they watch other people playing video games. And these are, these are their heroes. Um, let's introduce kids to real heroes. Um, real heroes, I think, wear halos. Uh, uh, introduce them to a variety of saints and share developmentally appropriate anecdotes about those saints. Um, dressing up as saints or acting out stories of saints can be a really fun and formative activity. And of course, you know, a great time to do this uh, during ordinary time is toward the end of ordinary time uh, on All Saints Day. Um, so uh, a, a wonderful time to dress up as the saints and talk about different saints. Um, Here's a game that you can play. Uh, all you need are two of each holy card with images of different saints. You can play an All Saints memory game, a memory match game. Um, and uh, you know, talk about those saint images as you play. Uh, consider handing out holy cards as prizes so that the kids can, can start their own collection. Um, during Lent, uh, one of the things I love to do is um, I'm going to I'm going to do the second bullet here first, and then I'll come back to the to the first one. Uh, so we'll skip ahead to Holy Week for a second here. Um, sing Hosanna, uh, the the different versions of the Hosanna song, and I've heard some great kid friendly versions of that as well. If you if you have the Alleluia curriculum, you've got uh, a kid friendly version of Hosanna on the Alleluia soundtrack. Um, but what I love to do when we talk about that Palm Sunday story is have the kids sing Hosanna and I like to give them, you know, like a two foot uh, length of green streamer. So get a couple of rolls of green streamers and give kids about two feet of green streamer and let that be like their palm uh, leaf and uh, sing Hosanna and have them wave the green streamer back and forth like the people wave the palms when they sang Hosanna to Jesus. Um, now let's talk about the stations of cross eggs. So what you're going to need for these are a bunch of plastic uh, uh, Easter eggs. And um, I, I'm going to show you uh, how this works. I'm going to give you the template for this. So I will point you to a website where you can um, get that template as a PDF for free. Um, so what you're going to put in the eggs are uh, these pictures that are on the right here. And this is only half of the pictures. Um, you, you have more stations than this. Uh, 15 stations total. Um, and uh, so what you have here are just very simple pictures that remind us of each station of the cross. And a good, great way to walk kids through the stations is by opening these eggs one at a time. They, you know, we'll have numbers on the outside of the eggs so they know which number. Um, they're opening next. And on the inside, then they'll have a picture that goes with that station. And uh, we want to, of course, keep this developmentally appropriate so the pictures are not too graphic, of course. Um, and uh, we'll just talk about what happened on the way um, during this way of the cross. That brings us to Easter, my favorite, favorite time of the church year. Um, so uh, what can we do at Easter? Um, one thing we can do is play a game called the Finding Jesus game. So you're going to use plastic uh, colored eggs here as well, but you're just going to use halves. Um, and you gather kids on the floor near you, and in the sight of the kids, place Jesus, a picture of Jesus, under one of those plastic egg halves, and then it's just like a shell game. You're going to slide the eggs around, changing positions without lifting the eggs from the floor, and then ask them, which one is Jesus under? Um, and, you know, keep, uh, keep playing that, you know, a couple of different rounds. And while you're playing, share with the kids that Jesus gives us new life. And then in the spring, we discover new life all around us. Another thing we can do is this activity, these uh, resurrection cups. And so um, you see this little girl here 
with one of those resurrection cups. On the outside, you have um, a picture of the angel in front of the tomb. This is a very simple picture, just a circle for the tomb and a um, circle head for the angel and a little halo over the, over the head. And then on the inside, a very simple drawing of Jesus, that's on a popsicle stick that goes through the cup so that they can actually have Jesus come out of the tomb. Uh, so he's in the tomb and then he's out of the tomb at Easter. And that brings us to Pentecost, um, an activity, something we can make at Pentecost. You make with those really cheap, those cheapest paper plates, the ones that are scalloped around the edges. And using one of those paper plates, cut an hourglass shape, a little head and a tail. And you're going to staple or tape the head and the tail uh, to those wings and attach 15 inches of string or ribbon to the head. Uh, have the kids make the eyes and, you know, maybe decorate the wings of, of their doves and then uh, have them make their doves fly. So you can, you know, uh, use a hole punch or, or tape uh, that uh, uh, length of string or ribbon um, and uh, have them very gently uh, move around the room with that on on that uh, length of string or ribbon and, and it gives a nice little flight uh, with those uh, paper plates and um, we'll talk about how the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove uh, at Jesus's baptism um, and so the dove reminds us of the Holy Spirit it's a symbol of the Holy Spirit who we also remember at Pentecost um, Finally, I, I want to uh, just say a few words about the importance of connecting with families throughout the liturgical year. Um, I think it's important to connect with families for a variety of reasons when we're talking about religion class. One, one of the ways we do this in our Alleluia program is that the take-home page for kids, it's a little bit like a weekly reader, but when you open it up, it's a placemat for the family meal. Uh, so you see an, an example of that here. And we give families uh, just a little thing they can do throughout the week, as well as a prayer for mealtime, some ask me questions that they can ask uh, their children about what they're learning that week um, with the answers in parentheses, just in case. Uh, and then a saint of the week um, that, uh, that they can talk about as well. Um, I think those prayers and simple activities that we recommend for families to use throughout the liturgical year are so important because it really helps families bring their faith into the home and establish some good and important family traditions as well. Um, all the activities that I shared today come from our Alleluia Early Childhood Program. Um, I told you that I'm definitely going to put the Stations of the Cross eggs up for you uh, online. I'll give you the, the website address for that in just a second. So you don't have to buy anything to get the template for that. Um, but, uh, but if you're interested in some more activities like this, um, if you need a, a pre-K-3, pre-K-4 kindergarten religion program that's reviewed and approved by the U.S. bishops, Alleluia is a great option for you. Um, at least I think so. Uh, I'm biased though, uh, but check it out. Um, ask for a, a, a sample. Uh, you can call OSV at 1-800-348-2440 or go to Alleluia, A-L-L-E-L-U dot com. I also want to invite you to connect with me, and this is the website where I'm going to post a link for those Stations of the Cross Eggs, uh, that template for that. Uh, SharingCatholicFaith.com, I'll make sure the link is posted to the front of that website in time for NCEA um, so that you can get that. I'm not going to leave it up all year, though, so get it now so that you can use it next year uh, when it comes time to do that. Um, and, uh, and I also want to mention, uh, you can connect with me on social media. Um, all of the episodes of the Alleluia show, uh, which is uh, just a YouTube show for kids with animation and music and storytelling, um, those, uh, we, we have an episode that corresponds with nearly every seasonal liturgical year. Um, I, I know it will be Easter when, uh, when NCEA happens, and uh, Father Joe Kempf is our guest in the Easter episode of Alleluia show. Uh, if you are, are familiar with him, he's great with kids. He has that little puppet, Big Al, and Big Al is also in the Alleluia Easter episode. You can find all of those at bit.ly, bit.ly slash Alleluia show. The address is on your screen. 
I also invite you to connect with me on uh, social media at Joseph OSV uh, on Twitter or bit.ly slash FB Joseph White for Facebook, Joseph White uh, on Facebook. Thank you for joining me for this. Um, I, uh, I I just think the world of all of you who uh, do early childhood education, you know, the research shows that you are some of the most formative and, and important people in the lives of children throughout the lifespan. The people that are educating kids when they are young are so critical to who they become. So thank you for what you do and may God bless you. Goodbye.